champions, the Philippines, taking on three-time finalist Lebanon. A place in the final four is on the line. A very warm welcome to Chongsha from me, Tim Long, alongside analyst Paul Kennedy. It's quarter-final day at the 28th FIBA Asia Championship here in China. Things really heating up here at the continent's premier international basketball tournament. Three medals and a place at the 2016 Olympics on the line in Chongsha over the course of the next three days. Three of the final four places have already been snapped up. The Philippines and Lebanon next up to battle it out for that one remaining spot in the semi-finals. Big wins already for Iran, for Japan, and for the host China in the three quarter-finals on this court already today. Next up, Philippines against Lebanon for that final spot in the final four. It's the last of the four quarter-finals of the 2015 FIBA Asia Championship here in Chongsha. 2013 finalists, the Philippines, in hot pursuit of the podium again and looking to go one step further this time around. They've won five straight. Lebanon three-time finalists themselves will look to end the streak and take the one remaining place in the final four. Analyst Paulo Kennedy alongside me, Tim Long. What can we expect from this one here today? Well, what a matchup we've got here. An outstanding, two outstanding teams. Both of them, well, Lebanon started quickly in the tournament. We thought they had dropped away, but their performance against Jordan to secure their place inside the quarterfinals was nothing short of outstanding. Uh, you know, that man there, John Abdel Noor, we said it, that game he needed to stand up. Amir Sahut, number five, he stood up as well. And they looked like a really disciplined unit. Earlier in the game, in the tournament, they'd been pressuring teams with their defense, creating some easy scores. While Arachi has been dynamite in the open court, uh, they dropped away from that. But once again against Jordan, it was as if they knew their tournament was on the line, and they played perhaps their best game, particularly with Ahmad Ibrahim out injured from that game. Jay Youngblood has been a star. This man, Basil Balji. What a player he's been, just doing all the little things, and Youngblood has been doing all the big things for Lebanon so far. It's a massive game for them tonight. They don't have a true center in the middle to match up on Andre Blatt, so they're going to need a true team performance at both ends of the floor, which is when they've been playing their best basketball anyway. We switch our attention down to the Philippines at the other end. We see Andre Blatch there. T Coach Tab Baldwin made a really interesting point. He said... Our great form has been because we have been using our team setups to utilize the individual brilliance of our players. And that's exactly what this team is about. A lot of brilliant one-on-one -on -one basketballers who can do special things. And they also rely on their energy. No one more so than Terence Romeo, who has just been a standout off the bench in the second half of this tournament after a slow start. Uh, his partner in crime, Jason Castro, or Jason William as he's listed, He's been outstanding as well, and Lebanon have had advantages with their speed so far in the tournament, but with Castro and Romeo on the court, will they have that advantage tonight? And the biggest question of all, with Tab Baldwin at the helm, getting good shots for Andre Blatch, can, do they have a big a matchup for the big man who's been so dominant? Those questions to be answered in just a few moments, but first we'll pause for the national anthems, starting with Lebanon.
The Philippines shocked by Palestine in their first ever game in the competition on the opening day have gone on to win five in a row by 51 over Hong Kong, by 46 over Kuwait, by seven over Japan, impressively by 14 over reigning champions Iran to avenge their 2013 final defeat and then by 34 over India. Lebanon started with a five-point win over Chinese Taipei, then a huge blow in game day two, losing in double overtime to Qatar, but showed their character to respond with a 36-point win over Kazakhstan before back-to-back -back defeats to Korea and China, but they finished the second round with a narrow do-or-die win over Jordan. They've come up short against the bigger teams so far, but no doubt they have the potential to put in one big performance. Will that come against the Philippines here tonight? Alongside me is our expert analyst, Paulo Kennedy, and he's ready to guide you through the team rosters and the starting fives. Well, there's the Lebanon roster, and as I mentioned earlier, it's a team, and they need to play as a team. So many key contributors, but perhaps the two most important, Muhammad Ali Haidar, the power forward who can shoot from inside, from outside, he's a shot blocker, and he and Basil Bauji make such a great defensive unit inside and against the big guys uh, for the Philippines. They're going to be so important. They've got a double team, Blatch. They've got to recover to Dio Campo, and we see them there in the starting lineup. And what about the speed of Wael Arachi and Jade Youngblood? And then the veteran, John Abdel Noor, he just does the little things. There is Youngblood, and there is Arakji, and they are so good at turning defense into offense. They disrupt, and there's Ibrahim, a great shot maker for Lebanon, but he's out of this game with injury. Will they be able to cover his absence against such a talented Philippines roster? Of course, we talked about Andre Blatch. We talked about Jason William, who now goes by his mother's name, Jason Castro. They're so important, but what about Gabe Norwood? You know, he plays the most minutes for Philippines, and he's the glue guy who does a bit of everything. And so is their small forward, Dondon Ponteveros, who's their best three-point shooter. We see him there, number 25 at the small forward position. Their best three-point shooter, but an unassuming guy. He's an outstanding defender. He rebounds the basketball, and there's Andre Blatch. Where will they use him tonight? Will they want him as a three-point shooter? Will they have him into the, under the basket? Will they get that mix of both? And can he become that distributor who makes his teammates so much more dangerous? You won't want to go anywhere in this one with the likes of Jason Castro, with the likes of Terence Romeo, and with Jay Youngblood and Whale Arakji. It could be a blink and you'll miss the play of the game type contest. It is going to be lightning fast from the get-go. And there is so much on the line. A place in the semi-finals here at the FIBA Asia Championship and also a place in that Olympic qualifying tournament as the bare minimum. The winner of this competition will go straight to the Olympics. The losers of the two semi-finals and the winner of uh, the other semi-final, the loser of the final, will go to that qualifying tournament to try and make it to Rio 2016. The Philippines, of course, will want to go all the way and go one step further than they did two years ago when they lost to Iran and they have certainly picked up pace at the right time. They have learned from that opening day defeat to Palestine and they have come back strong and they won't be underestimating anyone. They certainly won't. You know, they want to go one better than two years ago when they won the silver medal. Um, the draw has opened up to them thanks to their win over Iran. I guess the important thing we see, Iran Adel Campo there, he is so important in the way he rebounds the ball, hits shots, does the little things inside and switches the on-ball screen and defends smaller men but both teams need to look after the basketball because while both Lebanon and the Philippines can execute in the half court that's not their specialty they love forcing turnovers getting out and run and then getting easy baskets whether it's dunks or three-pointers or Terence Romeo slashing to the basket but the other end Wael Arachi slashing to the basket on the left hand and there is Andre Blatch he's going to be such a key tonight uh, the mobile Lebanon front court. They might have some defensive issues with him. Can they exploit him at the other end by getting him away from the basket and testing him out that way? We're already in China for the last of the 2015 FIBA Asia Championship quarterfinals. Myself, Tim Long, alongside analyst Paulo Kennedy to talk you through the action in Changsha. The second most successful nation in tournament history, taking on the sixth most successful five-time champions and reigning silver medal holders, the Philippines up against a team that reached five straight semi-finals until 2009. The three-time silver medalist Lebanon, the last place in the final four, is on the line. Got a foul after just seven seconds. It's on Hontiveros. 
We talk about how good the Philippines defense is on the perimeter. So they take one of the perimeter players down low, straight up, and excellent position there from Abdel Noor, and he forces the foul. Not shooting foul, so Lebanon to inbound. Still plenty of time. Abdel Noor. And he goes towards the paint now for Haidar. Across to the far side, they'll take the long two. First shot of the game is off the mark, and here come the Philippines. Jason Castro in towards Andre Blatch, two of the superstars at this tournament. Blatch off the mark. And so, so often do inside to Blatch early. He loves that little Euro step shot. That time he couldn't get it to fit. Here's High Dark. Now, Jay Youngblood, superstar for Lebanon, driving inside towards the glass. First point to the quarterfinal. Go Lebanon's way. And Gabe Norwood. Pretty much always gets the toughest backcourt matchup for the Philippines, and he's on young blood. Here's Jason Castro. He's going to pull it for three. Castro, nothing but net and airing accuracy with his first try. And he is so good at getting to the basket, but he's shooting 48% from long range in this tournament. He's almost impossible to guard when you can't sag off him because he punishes you from three. Plenty of talk about who's the best point guard in Asian basketball right now. He is right in the discussion. Knocked away here, and the Philippines will come with Castro in transition, and fouled by his opposite number, Arakji, who will perhaps, at some stage, want to get himself in that discussion as well. Sure, he will, just 21 years of age. He's shown a lot of promise in this tournament. Obviously, a fair bit of work to do to get up to Jason Castro's level, but if he can break even in that matchup tonight, that'll be a great result for Lebanon. Here is Castro, going on to the right hand, then the left, using the right to finish. He brought his dancing shoes today. <laughs> Unbelievable move. You know, Ratchi, one of the fastest players in the tournament, and he blew by him like he was standing still. The Philippines have made the better start. Arachi around the back, back out to High Dar for three. Black grabs the rebound. Here's Black on the offensive end. Bundling his way towards the hoop and called for a travel. But you just get the feeling that both sets of players are in the mood and it might just be a night of party tricks. They certainly are. And Blatch and Castro, both aggressive so far. That's a good sign for Philippines fans. And what about the balance of Blatch on that move? I mean, there's talk that he's not in great shape or whatever, but how about the ability off balance? Got himself on a with the spin move. There's a part of that discussion for you. Just incredible. I've likened him to Slovenian star Goran Dragic, and that was reminiscent of Dragic there. Castro with the three off the mark. Black's trying to save it over the top of his shoulders and out of bounds for the pinch ball. And you described it beautifully. Both teams in the mood. Some quality players making quality plays early on. Black to Norwood. Norwood free for the three, off the mark, doesn't take too many shots, missed that one. He's right back in Filipino possession, De Campo. Looking to back in and go to work one way then the other, back out to Blatch, he's going to take on a three, and Blatch knocks it down. And that's big. If your centre can step out and hit the three, if he can do that consistently tonight, it's going to be all sorts of trouble for Lebanon's defence, you just can't guard that. Blatch then making an effort on the defensive end to force the ball out. And Arachi will inbound to High Dar. On by Youngblood. Tip back towards the basket, but off the mark by Balji. Castro. Great Swing across to Norwood. He takes on another three. Misses that one. They've taken five attempts from downtown already. in less than three and a half minutes. Bauchi onto Youngblood. In towards the foul line across to Haidar. And the foul on Blatch. And while Haidar might be a traditional center, he's playing the five spot for, for Lebanon and he can hit that shot as well. And you see Blatch having to sprint out at him. And they pick up a first foul. They'll be happy to get two or three more on him in the first half. Up down north to Youngblood. Haidar looking to go inside. 
Balji. Balji meandering his way into the paint over to Arakji for the three. Couldn't get it to go at the end of the shot clock. You saw that time Blatt switched on to Balji. He went out to the three point line. Their Campo under the basket trying to find a way out. Blatt is battling for the board too. Has it knocked away? And Arakji will come down court in transition now for Lebanon. Slips through the fingers of Abdel Noor. Just some good defense from Castro. He picked which way Arakji was going to go. It was just enough to make that a wayward pass. Castro to Blatch. Their Campo, he's going to shoot a three. And they continue to fire from long range. Rebound to Abdel Noor. They're getting some good looks for Philippines. Haven't been able to make them drop just yet. Two of six from downtown after four and a half minutes. Youngblood. Feeds the ball inside to Haidar. He gets contact and he puts it in for a chance at a three-point play. That's just some really good execution. Pick and roll, simple basketball. They got the switch, so they go inside to the big man. And strong enough to finish through the contact to get the three-point play opportunity. At 15 points and seven rebounds in that big win over Jordan. Ali Haidar. He's averaging close to 15 in the tournament. He can't complete the three-point play. Black scrubs another rebound. It's five in the game already for him. You think Lebanon would be pretty happy with this start? They're getting things done, their defense has been good, but yet they're down by two and Castro on the move. Lightning fast from the blur to the rim. Blink and you'll miss it. Now let's see if he starts getting disruptive defensively because when he's creating steals, he just gets out in the open court and he finishes with ease. Haidar, Arakji. To Balji to shoot the three. Blatch didn't get to him quick enough, and Balji makes it pay. And that's where they can exploit Blatch. I think there needs to be some adjustments here from the Philippines on that ball screen. The guard is switching, ending up down low, and Blatch outside. They need to do a quick switch to keep Blatch around the rim. De Campo into a Puebla, who tries to find Blatch. Able to gather it just about, shoots the mid ranger and knocks it down. Andre Blatch certainly in the mood. He is in a no nonsense mood tonight. He caught that, he had a bounce in his step, and he just elevated and knocked it down. Rakji on to Youngblood. High dart. Going to look to move inside. Youngblood is going to look to shoot the three instead. Offensive board, Abdel Noor. Here's Balji. Hands it off to Arakji. Shot clock down to five. Arakji trying the spin move again as his pocket picked. And there's the pass to Norwood who misses the jam. Castro picks it back up. And he's not going to make a mistake with that one. He said, if you're going to be like that, Gabe, I'll finish it myself. What a scrambling play. First the steal, then the, the dish, then the offensive rebound and the finish. He's doing it all. Five point Philippines lead. Abdel Noor pulls up for the long two, can't hit. Castro grabs the rebound. He's on nine points already, Jason Castro. Blatch is going to shoot another three. Not that time for Andre Blatch. They would have made it an eight point lead. And the Philippines look so dangerous every time in transition. Balji getting away from a Buever and putting it in. A really good job there by Balji deep inside. It might have actually been Haidar who got the pin on the defender under the basket and was effectively a screen for his man just to waltz in and shoot a layup. Castro pulls up for a three. How about that? With Haidar in his face, Jason Castro knocks it down and that's 12 points in the opening seven and a half minutes. This has been incredible so far. Lebanon are going to have to make some adjustments. They're going to have to give him more attention. And, of course, that'll open up some of the other Philippines players. Foul on there, Campo. It's the fourth foul on the Philippines. And, you know, we're talking about getting star players involved, drawing up plays for star players. Blatch and Castro have got all 17 of the Philippines points. You know, I think... Drawing the plays is one thing, just being hot is another. Yeah, it's making plays. That's what it's about in the end. Good players make coaches look good. But I think Lebanon would be reasonably happy to be within six. 
after such a hot start from Blatch and Castro. This is the fourth team foul for Team Philippines. Foul number five there in the quarter, so Lebanon at the line now. And Jay Youngblood misses one. He's been a superstar for them, 19 points per game. Four rebounds, 1.5 steals. And this is both from the foul line, though. Abdel Nour, clear side dark, knocked away and out of bounds. The Philippines into a zone on that possession, a 2 3 with Ganwalos into the game. In fact, there's four bench men on the floor with Andre Blanche in the middle. Tackle to inbound, they've only got three left to shoot. Youngblood gets in towards the foul line, hangs it up at the end of the shot clock, but can't hit. Look out, here's Romeo. Just as fast as Castro. Blanche. There's certainly no rest when you go up against this Philippine side. Romeo, right hand onto the left. There's the spin move, can't finish off the glass. Good hands from Ackle, just disrupted the ball enough to make that a tough shot. And Ackle's going to slow it down for the final minute and a half of the first quarter. Here's High Dark, dribbled the ball off his foot, up against Pingris, able to grab it, Balji. Shot clock at five as Balji gets oh. into the paint, hangs it over the top of the defence. You talk about exploiting Andre Blatch, he, he might be in prime condition, but he's a good defender when he wants to be. But that was just too tough a shot with the left hand. Romeo, Blatch looking to set the screen. Romeo thought about the three, closed down by his opposite number. To a Bueva, he puts it up. Difficult shot on the turn, won't go. Things look very different without Castro out there on the floor. Balji gets Blatch up in the air, drives down the baseline and forces it in. Through a Bueva. It takes some muscle to do that, and a chance at a three point play. So far, High Dart and, Bal and Balji have just been exceptional. They've been stepping out if the shots there, they take it, but if not, they're putting the ball on the floor and going hard at the rack. And everybody knows for the Philippines, they know Castro can score, they know what Blatch can do, but what can the other players do? Since Castro sat down, they haven't got those same good looks they were getting earlier in the game. Balji does complete the three point play and brings Lebanon within one. Final minute of the quarter. Wayless moves it on, Abueva is going to shoot the three and he's going to answer back. If my records are correct, that's his first three-pointer of the tournament. What a time to hit it. The Philippines have four in the first quarter. Abueva trying to come up with a steal and has to, and a foul on Abdel Noor. And that's where the Philippines bench is dangerous. They're not a great half-court team, but they've got energy, they've got athleticism, and they've got to force some turnovers and then get down the court quick and capitalise. Romeo. There's a three-second differential between shot and game clock at the end of the first quarter. Romeo, so quick onto the left hand, driving in, slicing through the defence, but couldn't finish. Here's Akul. Five left to shoot for Lebanon. Balji, looking to get to the baseline, into trouble. And then threw it into Philippine oh. possession. That shot we after the buzzer from three-quarter court went down, but of course it's waved off. Yeah, we didn't see it on the TV pictures, but it was too late anyway. But it rather sums up what has been a first quarter full of flair, full of excitement, full of drama and full of big plays. And the Philippines lead at the end of one, 20 to 16. Well, what a great quarter of basketball. Two energetic teams and they've come to play. As you, you picked that up really early in the game, the three-pointers, the Philippines, four of nine. They'd be really happy with that early on. Abueva hitting his first three of the tournament. Jason Castro getting off the hook, slicing to the basket, hitting threes. The rebounding count's pretty even. Six fouls on the Philippines, but no one with more than one. So now no foul troubles there. Four steals for the Philippines. And 
we talked early on, Lebanon can't afford to have five turnovers per quarter because we see what this man and Jason Castro can do in the open court. He was Castro, the step back. The scouting report was cut off his drive and he said, I'm happy with that. Look at that drive from Arachi. And this one as well, the spin inside to the right hand. He's non-preferred hand. He's an excitement machine. Coach said, I want some threes. And Basil Bauji said, no problems, coach. I'll bury one from the top. And how about this? The pass, it was, the dunk was missed. But Castro went and got it and finished it off himself inside, slicing through the defense. At that point, when Andre Blatch nailed this big three, it looked like the Philippines might open up a big lead early on. The bench were excited. The fans were excited. But Lebanon came back, and it's a four-point game. Two players hitting double figures in the first quarter. 12 for Jason Castro. Five of six from the field. Two of three from downtown. Ten for Basil Balji for Lebanon. Four of six from the field. As we come back for the start of the second quarter, it's the Philippines 20, Lebanon 16. And Weylas onto a Bueva. Five benchmen on the floor for the Philippines. Coach Tab Baldwin had gone away from that lineup later in the tournament. We thought he'd settled on maybe an eight man rotation, but earlier on, when that, these five players were on the court together, things did not work well, and a bad start there with the turnover. And they had the rest day yesterday, of course. And he's trusting those bench players. And again, at the start of the second quarter. And we are sued. Now Jay Youngblood moves it into the paint. Balji continues to do the business. He's an unassuming looking basketballer, but as he's showing tonight, often he's just a role player, but he can be more than that when his team needs it. Romeo to Ganwelas, in towards Tarson for the second time. In the space of the opening minute, he lost the handle on the ball. This time still Filipino possession. Bench testing the patience of Tab Baldwin here. You know, they had that lead earlier on. They can't afford to let Lebanon get out in front because they're an excellent front running team. Here's Romeo, he's going to shoot the three. Off the mark, they'll go for the offensive rebound with the energy of the Braver. Out of bounds and still for the Pete's possession. And a flop warning from Terence Romeo there from the referee. I just wonder with the improved form of Terence Romeo if he's almost convinced the coach that he can run this five on the field because he's improved so much. I think we've got a little bit of blood here on Game Wales. Monteveros coming into the game. I think that's a good sub for the Philippines. I think Monteveros is a steady head for this team and a man who can spread the defense if they collapse on Romeo. Here is Terence Romeo. To the left hand down the baseline and lays it in with the right. Just great body control. He's a pint-sized fella, but he can get inside, he can take contact and still finish. And how much has he improved in that since the start of the tournament? He shot very poorly over the first two games and he's been superb over the last four. Lebanon turned the ball over. Important basket that for him though, he missed his first three shots and the bench wasn't quite working out on the floor. Yeah, and you move from the group stage to the knockout stage, it's like a different tournament. And for a lot of players, it's a different mindset. A confidence guy like Romeo, he needs a good start. Here is Romeo, but driving into traffic, knocked away. Still Philippine possession. On that last possession, great defense from Toss. He switched the ball screen and forced the mistake from Saud. comes to Romeo, who catches it in a good position and puts it in on the move and gets the foul as well. And that was just smart play from Romeo. It's not something we said a lot about him early in the tournament. The out-of-bounds play broke down. He just curled all the way around and felt the contact. He was smart enough to finish. He's at the line for a chance to complete the three-point play and a chance to extend the Philippines' lead to seven, and does. He single-handedly swung the momentum here. 
He's such a dangerous proposition to guard in the, with the level of confidence he's playing with. Five points in the space of about 30 seconds for Terence Romeo. Young Youngblood knocked away by Abueva, and here comes Romeo behind the back. Trying to get away from Ackle, finds a waiver. Hesitation on the shot, and they will tip it in with Pingris. Mark Pingris, energy guy. And all of a sudden, just when it looked like the momentum was, Le was with Lebanon, the Philippines have got their biggest lead of the game. The bench doing the business for the Philippines. Terence Romeo, the spark, with five points. Waver's made some big plays at both ends of the court and Pingris with the touch to give them a nine point lead. And what about the behind the back dribble and then the up in the air bounce pass from Romeo? Lebanon calling timeout. Down by nine. What a fantastic start we've had to the final quarter-final of the day here in Chongship. Just one remaining ticket to the final four. And the Philippines have made a wonderful start. Terence Romeo coming off the bench for five points at the start of the second quarter. After 12 points for Jason Castro. And Jay Youngblood, just a couple of points so far for Lebanon. And of course, the winner of this game to face Japan in the semi-finals. Dial onto Youngblood. Youngblood slips on the court. Abueva all over him. And last possession, Abueva stole the ball. Ended up with two points down the other end. This time, knocks it out of bounds in just 10 seconds on the shot clock. Stagger, stagger. Hoping to come up with the Philippine possession. He lands on the line. So still Lebanon on ball. And this is where Youngblood needs to be smart. Abueva is an energy player, a hustle guy. He's not going to beat him for athleticism. So he has to put him in some spots where Abueva has to make some decisions he's not used to. And perhaps the low block is the position for that. Haidar shoots the long two. Short rebound. Grabbed here by Honti Veyros. Abueva, talk about that energy. So fast down court, but called for the travel. Almost too fast. A little too fast that time, but you're not going to discourage that sort of energy. And that was going to be an exciting finish. Haidar on to so so trying to get to the basket, draws contact and will go to the line for two. And he was the man against Jordan. He hit four three-pointers in a quarter, most of them down in the left-hand side corner of the, the court. That time putting the ball on the floor and drawing a foul. 20 points in that big game. A big win for them. It was a do-or-die win. Finished the game four of six from downtown. Castro back in the ball game for the Philippines. So hitting from the foul line. He's shooting around 50% from three-point range over the course of the tournament. So Romeo and Castro on the floor for the Philippines. Abueva. Abueva to the foul line. Off the mark, Romeo grabs the rebound. Hands it off to Castro. You can see Castro outranks him there. Romeo didn't want to give it up. But Castro is the number one man. Castro from the outside. Off the mark, offensive board here for Toss, then knocked away by Youngblood, and here come Lebanon. Abdel Noor finding a passage to the basket, and the piece is picked up by Haidar. It's when Lebanon are aggressive, it's when they're at their best, when they slow down in the half court. They're a little bit of inexperienced in that situation, but in the open court, they're outstanding. Castro all the way through, a brave got a touch. And that's what he brings, just energy. He, the broken play is his specialty, and we see it again there. Young bloke to the cutting high. Daru gets contact but can't get to the wall. Nice 
nice feed inside and a great cut from the top. And Haidar so good at setting up at the top of the arc where that's his best three-point shooting spot to draw the defense out. That time they turned it, their back on him and he sliced down the lane for the pass. Second foul on a waiver. And he joins Honti Veyros on two fouls. Haidar, four points in the game so far. This is from the foul line. He missed the chance at completing a three-point play a little earlier. He misses that one as well, so 0 of 3 from the foul line. As a team, Lebanon 3 of 8. Here's Romeo to Castro. Now Blatch. Blatch looking to bundle his way through. What a pretty move. He's brought his dancing shoes too. He has. Well, Lebanon were in his own defense, so Blatch was matched up against a guard. He didn't care. He put the ball on the floor, blew by him. An athletic finish from the big man. Youngblood. So he's moving it on to High Dart. High Dart to the baseline and puts it in off the window. At the other end, that was poor defense from Blatch. He could see the mismatch down low. He didn't help Norwood out. He needed to be there to block that shot. Romeo from the corner for three. Too long. Dropped by Arakji. Arakji onto the left hand, looking to drive back out to Youngblood on the far side. Balji thought about the three. Oh, Youngblood has it picked off by Romeo, who comes down court oh, wow. and looks to finish, but can't quite put the finishing touches on what would have been a superb play. So, going to shoot the long three, short, Blatch grabs it. Romeo is like a cat in a window going after a fly. <laughs> exactly what I was going to say, too. Speaking of fast, Castro. Actually slow it down for a moment, then he'll pull up for three. Too long. Foul called there on Pingris. A little hold. That's one of those things where a player like Castro, who can hit that shot, he has all tournament. But sometimes when you connect early, sometimes you can fall in love with that. And the Philippines are at their best when Castro's getting to the line because all of a sudden the defense has to rotate and scramble. And all the players around him are getting open shots or open driving lanes or offensive rebounding opportunities. Across the midway point of the second quarter. Philippines leading by seven. Rakji onto Balji. Blatch comes to close him down. Balji looking to drive inside. Tips his own shot back towards the basket but can't finish. Castro. Trapped by the double team, finds Blatch on the perimeter. Thought about the three, goes oh, inside wow. to hang in off the glass. Andre Blatch doing a bit of window shopping. Oh, well, he went for the Euro step. He realized he was a bit too far out, so he just elevated straight up and put it softly off the glass. That is a world-class move right there. Jay Youngblood. Comes for Ratchi to drive into the paint, rides the challenges, difficult shot worth go. Dangerous period here for Lebanon. Blatch to Norwood, he's going to try another three. Norwood has missed all three of his attempts from that spot. The Philippines now 4 of 14 from long range, but they've been good looks. If they start to drop, Lebanon in all sorts of trouble. So, and Wayla's got a tip on it. Here's Haidar. Pingris might be a little dizzy. <laughs> what a move from Haidar. We talk about his ability to do it all. Fully on display there. Just great balance for a big man to be able to make the spin move and then finish. Blatch getting inside, looking to go all the way again. Like a freight train that time. He was like a freight train. And Basil Balji was caught in the headlights. He was right in front of him. There was nothing he could do. He read, he read what Blatch was going to do, but stopping it is another thing altogether. Blatch about to move into double figures if he can hit one of these two. And it is 10 points for Andre Blatch, four of six from the field. 
Seven rebounds as well. I suspect we're about to see a sub on the shooter. So Blatch to come out for Dio Campo. And that will give the Philippines a very mobile defensive line. Blatch makes them both now has 11. In fact, that sub is for Pingris. But Dio Campo back into the ball game. The Philippines lead is nine points with three minutes of the first half to play. Rakji up against Castro. Youngblood is going to shoot the three some way off. Grabbed by Balji under the rim. Rakji on to Saud. Saud to Youngblood. We've got a whistle on the play. So again, Wales underneath trying to battle with Balji. He doesn't look like an Adonis, but he's a big, strong fella. He's smart. He knows how to get good position. Rakji. Saud towards the corner. And Wayla's all over him. Balji, shot clock's down to three. Balji has to put it up for the long two. And Rakji was flying in, trying to grab the rebound and a foul call. He caught Castro unawares there. And Castro showed before that he's every bit as quick, if not quicker than Arachi, but the young fella saw that his head was turned and he was at the offensive glass in an instant. First foul shot off the mark for Arachi, 21-year-old. Ibrahim can't bear to watch all these missed free throws. Does get the second to go, but as a team, Lebanon now just four of ten. <laughs> Half court trap here with Balji out the front. Castro to Blatch. Blatch across to Gamwelas. Castro again. Ten seconds to work with on the shot clock. In the corner is De Campo. Three off the mark. Youngblood grabs the rebound and Arachi will race down court. Youngblood puts it in. They can do with him really getting going. That doubles his tally. Again, that was created by the big man, this time Haidar, running the floor hard and getting post position and just soaking up a defender to open up the driving lane. Blatch turns towards the baseline. Two of them on him. Trying to find a way out, make it three of them on him. And he picks up the foul after the Houdini move and beats the chest. The Filipino blood is pumping. Well, it's like trying to wrestle with a bear underneath there. Yeah, maybe he's not in prime condition, but that just adds more weight to the equation. And he had two or three opportunities there, and no one could stop him. He's just too big and strong. Time up call with one minute and 44 seconds remaining in the half. The Philippines are up by eight points and a chance to add one more with Blatch at the line. And he has 13 points to lead all scorers in the game now. And eight rebounds as well, close to a first half double double for Andre Blatch, who seems to be getting more and more effective the longer the tournament goes on. Yeah, he is. And you look to the Lebanon at the moment, they're down eight, it could become nine. They're playing some pretty good basketball. You look at Balji, he's been such an energizer so far today. They've missed those they've missed those free throws, six free throws they've left behind, but apart from that. Exploiting mismatches like that one well. Balji inside, Haidar inside and out. But so far, I don't think we've seen the best of the Philippines. It's how about that move from Haidar? But it's just some of that individual brilliance, particularly Castro, Romeo and Blatch. If the team system or the team defense puts them in positions to score, they are just so hard to stop. Talk about the missed free throws from Lebanon. One of six from the three-point line as well, an area they would like to improve. Of course, we talked about Amir Saud hitting four of six the other night. And it became contagious against Jordan. Yeah, he started splashing them, and his teammates, some of whom had been struggling, they started splashing them as well. And before Jordan knew it, they were out of the ball game. Blatch unable to hit the foul shot, so it remains an eight-point game. Final minute and a half of the half. Youngblood. This is it across to Haidar, who puts up the contested three, but gets it to go. Long two call for Haidar. That takes him to double figures. At the fingertips of Blatch, the Philippines turn it over. Still 75 seconds to go in the half. Lebanon now 
have an opportunity to make it a very close game. It's the little things in basketball. Castro thought he had an easy pass to Norwood. Youngblood put in that little burst to deny it, and all of a sudden the connection wasn't there, and a tough pass was thrown out of bounds afterwards. Here is Youngblood. Into high dar, the hesitation and the foul. That's a tough foul. Dio Campo was caught in the air, but he wasn't going to give away a three-point play. Another chance. I'm sure that apology made Ali Hyde uh, feel a whole lot better. Haidar's been doing his best to make the Philippines feel bad tonight. Five of seven from the field, ten points, but he misses the foul shot. He's 0 of 4 from the foul line. And that's really been the difference between the two teams. That and the burst from Jason Castro early on. He does hit that one. 1 of 5 now. Finally able to get on the board from the foul line. Momentum into half time is so important. We've got a minute, just under a minute to play a five point ball game. This could go Ooh. either way and can have a big bearing on what happens after half time. Five point Philippines lead, final minute for the first half. Talking about Levenham now missing seven free throws. That's the difference right there. Yanwelas. Moved on by Norwood. Shot clock down to five now. Norwood trap finds a way to Castro. Moves it on to Deo Campo. Hesitates for the three-point shot. Off the mark. Blatch trying to tip it. Able to tip it to himself and pull down the ball. And then has it knocked away. Youngblood. Final seconds of the first half. Still going to be Levin on ball. I've really enjoyed that matchup between Gabe Norwood and Jay Youngblood. And when Norwood goes to the bench, Abueva up there in his face as well. There's not been a great deal of joy for Jay Youngblood. Four points so far for a man who averages 19 through the tournament. Lebanon calling timeout with 17.4 seconds remaining in the half. The, the shot clock switched off, so they'll get the last opportunity if they play this smart. Yeah, you would imagine it either be Youngblood or Arakchi with the basketball. The one thing that's worked well for them all quarter, or all half, as we see Romeo slashing to the basket, is getting their big guys outside for either the jump shot or for the drive. So you'd think they'll get those big guys spreading the floor. And how about that big guy spreading the floor and then driving into the holes. And there he is on the O boards as well. In fact, that was Abueva. And he was excited about it. Interesting to see if there's any defensive adjustments from the Philippines as well. Do they go to a zone? Do they start in man-to-man -man and wait for Lebanon to come off a ball screen and then switch into a zone defense? There's a number of things they can do to disrupt this play that's been drawn up by Lebanon. We saw Andrew Blatch's numbers there, just one board away from a double-double in the first half. We talked about superstar status and big scorers. 25 points combined for Blatch and for Castro in this first half, but 23 points combined for Haidar and Balji for Lebanon. Two big scores for both teams. Zone defense here. Final five seconds now. Youngblood into the paint, gets away through. Not finished though. Blatch got a piece of that. Another big play from Andre Blatch. It's been a huge half for him. It's been a pretty impressive half all round. This one is only a five point differential. The Philippines had a larger lead than that. Coach Tab Baldwin doesn't look too happy at the half, but his big stars have come to play. 13 for Blatch, 12 for Castro, and they have the lead by five, 37 to 32 at half time. Well, the Philippines have had the answers. They got out early thanks to Jason Castro. They were shooting the ball well from three-point land early. They've settled for that shot a little bit too much. Lebanon struggling from three-point range and from the free-throw line, as we've discussed. But look at the 12 offensive rebounds for the Philippines. When you've got a five-point lead and you've had that much of the ball, that's what you've got to thank. And the turnovers as well. Eight is too many for Lebanon, but they only had three in that quarter. That's a much better number than the opening quarter. The Philippines have looked like they've had the answers. Blatch, 13-9, and nine, as you said. 
Bougie 12 and 7. So that mismatch has been happening at both ends of the floor. And Jay Young, but he hasn't been able to score a lot. Three assists, though, in the first half. And Jason Castro with 12. Most of them in that early burst. In fact, I think all of them in that first quarter. But we haven't seen the best from the Philippines. Is it still to come, or are they struggling to shake the shackles of Lebanon? Lebanon would be very comfortable in this position. They'd know they can play some better basketball. They know they play better with Ibrahim on the floor, but they don't have him tonight. Balji has stepped up instead. That was a sweet left-handed drive from the big man. And here was the hustle of Abueva, forcing the steal. And what about the speed of Romero, of Romeo, I should say. Abdono took it strong. Haidar has been everywhere. He's hit threes, he's pulled in rebounds. And this man's been everywhere as well. He gets a little help this time from Abueva. And it's an energy game. Andre Blatch, he was in the mood. We could tell that from early on. He's nearly got a double-double, and that was probably the best of all his moves in the first half. There were plenty of good ones for Haidar, too. Five of seven from the field for 11 points. Lebanon certainly have the weapons themselves to get back in this one. Missed free throws costing them, though. And at the moment, they're down by five. Philippines 37, Lebanon 32. Join us for the second half in around 10 minutes' time.
Welcome back to Chongsha, where the Philippines lead by five. As we get ready to start the second half of this quarter-final at the 2015 FIBA Asia Championship. 37 to 32, the lead is Lebanon inbound at the start of the third quarter. Both Ratchet. teams back to their starting lineups. Now Abdel Noor, Youngblood. Fires the pass into high dark with pinpoint precision. The Philippines into a zone and if they keep defending like that, they'll be back into man and man in no time. Four assists now for Youngblood. Blatch looking to go back to work at the start of the second half. Gets fouled. And no surprise they went into Blatch. He and Jason Castro combined 10 of 17 in the first half of it, as we see that move. The rest of the team, 5 of 24 from the field, so some other players are going to have to step up and make some plays. Here is Castro, around the screen of Blatch. Castro directing traffic, then was looking for the entry pass, and it's picked off by Balji. Arakji, fouled by Castro in transition. Balji fronting the post there, aggressive defense. Castro had to recognize that, penetrate, use Blatch as a screen and get to the basket. I'm looking to make it a one-point game or maybe even tight, having been down by as many as nine. Here's Youngblood. They will try and tie from the far side. Three short from Balji, grabs his own rebound. Can't get it to go. Another offensive ball, this time for High Dar. Smart play from High Dar. He was surrounded by Philippines players there. He kicked it out. Youngblood on the move and off balance and short. Here's where Castro's at his best. He finds Blatch. Philippines slowing it down this time. Blatch looking to spin away from Balji. Tremendous move, but he couldn't get the drop, and he wanted a foul. He's desperate for a foul. That move deserved a basket and probably should have had one. He needs to finish, even if there is contact. Ratchi towards Haidar. Haidar going to drive into the lane. Blatch stepping across, trying to George draw the charge, and then from the corner, it's off the mark. Batted back to Haidar. Messy passage of play and a foul call. Cue the Benny Hill music on that one. Um, but some scrambling from both teams. Obviously, as you start to tick down towards the end of this game, both teams know what's at stake. It's a semi-final matchup with Japan on the line. It's a three-point ball game here, and everything that's happened before in the tournament goes out the window. It's just about making plays for 18 minutes. Youngblood. High dark. He's going to try the three now. Short as well, and there's a foul under the basket. Another foul on the rebounding contest, going against the Philippines. As the game ticks down, little things like that just, and that's the third foul on Hunter Veras. He only played six minutes in the first half due to foul trouble. You see there, hooking over the shoulder of Abdul Noor. What a great job by Abdul Noor to get inside him, get offensive rebounding position, and, and force him to foul. Young blood driving inside. Nice move from him. Balji trying to tip it in. It's a Braver who comes away with it. Trotted away from behind by Youngblood. Castro picks it up. Now he's going to look to be more methodical. De Campo. Oh, what the lane. Pass. Nice pass to a Braver falling backwards. Can't get it to go. A couple of really easy opportunities around the basket missed by the Philippines. And actually forcing the pass to Abdel Noor. Spin from High Dar, trying to get away from Abueva, who's right back at him. Ratji prodded away by Castro, showing him how it's done, and coming all the way, coast to coast, to finish. So the best offense for the Philippines is Jason Castro getting a steal. He is so quick, and once he gets his hands on it, nobody's going to catch him. Had the freedom of Chongsha to finish. I think the Philippines look like they're a little light on ideas at times in the half court. Be good to see them go to that high ball screen with either Blatch or Dio Campo in it and Castro with the ball. Generally, good things happen out of that set. Abdel Noor, forced away by Blatch. 
Wavers in a real battle here. Underneath with uh, Balji who wanted a foul. He got some help from his mates though, didn't he? Four white shirts surrounding Balji there. It was uh, Deo Campo that Balji wanted a foul on. Norwood across to Blatch. Makes the long two, then will put it up. He is just so good when he finds his stroke. And that 15 to 18 foot range, he's really dangerous. They need to go to him more there more often and also get some action away from the ball so that he can feed his teammates. He's an outstanding passer for a big man. The Philippines lead back to seven. This time, Dea Campo is called for a foul. It's number three on him. Abdel Noor. Young blood. Almost knocked away by Norwood. Balji steps in for the two. Blatch grabs the rebound. Double double now for Andre Blatch. Here goes Castro again. Fouled by Akko. And Balji missing that little chip shot. Haidar missing an opportunity earlier at the start of the game. They had great success because their two big men were able to exploit the slower Philippines big men, particularly Blatch. <laughs> Norwood to inbound for the Philippines. Castro. Blatch moving in towards the basket. Castro's going to pull up for three. Oh. And Castro nails the three. And the Filipino flourish continues. They're up by ten. Well, I mean, what can you do? We spoke about it earlier. This man, he can blow by you to the hole. So you're down low in your stance, and he just elevates and shoots it over the top. And he is in career-best form at the moment. 17 points for Jason Castro. 7 of 11 from the field, 3 of 6 from downtown. They're up by 10 as we approach the midway point of the third. Philippines lead Lebanon in the quarterfinals here at the 2015 FIBA Asia Championship. Just one spot remaining in the semis, and at the moment the Philippines have the advantage. And led by the 17 points now of Jason Castro, who just hit a three-pointer to extend the lead to double digits for the very first time. A couple of steals as well. They've got 15 from Andre Blatch, but for Lebanon, 13 or 12 now for Basil Balji it is, 5 of 15 from the field, 11 rebounds, he's got a double-double. Blatch with 11 boards as well, so two players on double-doubles before the midway point of the third quarter. It's been set by Abdel Noor, Youngblood's going to put up the three, and Blatch grabs another ball. The Philippine zone at the start of that quarter broke down immediately, they went back to it out of that timeout, executed it much better, forced the outside shot. Waver looking to drive down the baseline, off balance through the pass into the hands of Youngblood, but Castro comes up with the ball. What about hustle of Castro? Knocked away out of bounds, he tried to move it back to a waver. In order to inbound, Castro tries another from the outside. Way off that time at the end of the shot clock. Saoud, Youngblood, in that zone again. Saoud, away from the screen of Balji, and threw it away. And that was a really good show from Andre Blatch. He was in the middle of that zone, but he read the ball screen. Saoud was coming off expecting to have some clear space, but Blatch was there to meet him, and he forced the errant pass. Castro to Norwood. That's Jason Castro again. Around the screen of Blanche, pulls up for the mid-ranger this time and knocks it down. He's like a machine at times. He's having a personal party here tonight. What about the balance going at full speed, just stops on a dime, elevates under control and knocks down the jumper. The lead 
been stretched to 12. Youngblood, prepped by the double team out to Balji. Double off to Saoud. Drops off down to two already, almost stolen by Abueva and a foul. And just poor shot clock recognition there from Abueva. He's an instinctive player, he wanted the steal and the jam. And he gives away the foul with less than a second on the shot clock. Three of them on three fouls now. The Philippines of Waver, Ponte Veros and Deo Campo. Del Nor hitting from the line points that Lebanon probably wouldn't have had had Waver not attempted that steal. Gets them both to go. They struggled from the foul line in the first half. Here comes Romeo. I like this lineup for the Philippines. The two point guards, they can create havoc at both ends of the floor. So let's see if they use. Yeah, look at that. The pass yeah. into Norwood, who pulls the chain for a big flush. Yeah, we talked about using Blatch as a passer from that big post, and especially against the zone defense. Because he can shoot, the zone had to go to him, and it opened up the back door. So from the outside, nails that one. You know he can do it. That's his side of the floor. You cannot leave him open on the left-hand side. He's just going to bury it. Nine-point game. Only the second field goal of the quarter for Lebanon. Latch from mid-range. Off the mark, batted back towards Saoud. Driving at Romeo. Finds Ackle completely free. Latch grabs the rebound. Ackle just needed to have some patience there. He had teammates open if he just waited for a couple of seconds. Blatch moving it on. So Pingris, who hesitated, then should have put it in. Able to grab his own rebound. Romeo. Norwood onto Blatch. Ooh, he was hit hard by Youngblood. That looks like shoulder troubles for Andre Blatch. Straight away, he went down, he didn't want to move it. He's popped it. I think he's popped this out of the socket. Oh, he's in real pain. Yeah, he saw the ankle injury earlier in the tournament. They're trying to put that back in, if I'm not mistaken. He played on with that ankle injury and then had a double-double. And then came back the following day to play in the big win over Iran. And he's going to go on after this as well to shoot the foul shots. He subbed out of the ball game, but he looks to me as if he wants to keep going. He wanted to take the free throws. Hey, yeah, don't pass up free points. But how about the ball movement before that? We saw the passing inside. Pingris missed the layup. They got it back, and then three slick passes left Blatch open under the basket. And the Philippines wasting some golden chances here. De Campo at the line looking for his first score. Unable to get that one to drop. Ten point ball game, final three minutes of the third. We say it so often, but a massive three minutes here at a ten point ball game. The Philippines won't want this to come down in the final few minutes, shot for shot. So this is the chance for them to really blow this game out and force Lebanon to do something special and go away from their plan A. But for Lebanon, if they can reduce the margin, they can turn this into a grind. And I think they'll be every bit as comfortable as the Philippines in that style. Called to Abdel Noor, high catch, he gets contact and he puts it in. Chats at a three-point play for Ackle. I know Coach Matic didn't draw that one up. It was a broken play. But it was a smart cut to the basket by Abdul Noor. He saw that Romeo wasn't looking at him. He was just ball focused. So he got into the gap behind him and finished. Norwood in the game on three fouls. Eight point game, chance to make it a seven point game. Abdel Noor 
Has missed all four of his shots before that one. Completes the three-point play. Here's Castro. Toss to Romeo. Over to Norwood. To the baseline, Pingris wants to move inside to Toss, knocked away. And he's convinced it should be Filipino ball, and it's going to go the other way. Well, I think all ten players on the court thought that that would be a Philippines ball. They're all hanging around for the inbounds. And it looked as if Basil Bauji's hand may have tapped that out, but as they say, them's the breaks, and it's Lebanon with a chance to bring it back here. They could even get, get it within four with a three-point bomb. So, he's certainly capable. This time, going to attack inside. Lightning fast move to the hoop. You just sense the crowd here getting behind Lebanon. They can see the charge coming. They feel they're the underdogs. And Saoud is taking them for a ride at the moment. Castro to Norwood. Here's Jason Castro again. Final five seconds of the shot clock. Castro's going to pull it for three oh. and backs it in. Castro from the outside, his fourth of the game, and he's got 22. There's a late night transaction from Jason Castro, but what a basket for the Philippines. They needed that badly. Abdel Noor out to Haidar. Trapped and finding a way out down the baseline. So who got the mark, but tipped back in by Basil Balji. Who else but Balji? The hustle play extraordinaire. What a game it's been from him. 14 points and 13 rebounds. And you figure he's got some work to do yet. Toss hangs it up from mid-range, can't hit. Only a six-point game and a foul in transition. And just a slight touch foul called there. I don't think that Pingris was trying to foul at all. In fact, I think he first thought about it, took his arm out of the way, and that slight contact was called a foul. But I find it remarkable because that contact in half-court basketball isn't called a foul. Yet we have a fast break and the referee calls it a foul. And of course, there's that campaign out there on social media called hashtag free the fast break. Instead, we get two free throws here. The first one missed by Abdel Noor. Had nine points and seven boards in that big win over Jordan. Completed the three-point play in this game not too long ago. It's the second foul shot and makes it a five-point game with 11 minutes and change remaining. Out comes Pingris. Huge moment here for both teams. Can the Philippines get a good shot for Andre Blatch here? He's looked unstoppable at times. Latch hands it to Romeo, who takes it on and nails the three. And there's some more of that Filipino flair. And this young man has just grown and grown as the tournament has worn on and the confidence of Andre Blatch at the crucial time to hand off. Youngblood grabs his own rebounds and then puts it in. Romeo to Norwood, final 30 seconds of the third. Romeo finding a way out back to Norwood again. Gambuela's going to drive towards the baseline and flipped up and in by Deo Campo. Lightning fast, ball movement and driving from the Philippines. Spot on, Tim. And what about the composure of Gambuelos? He got into the lane, but he didn't rush it. He waited to see what the defense would do, and he found Deo Campo wide open. Final seconds of the third, eight point Philippines lead. In the hands of Jay Youngblood, looking to drive at the heart of the defence, back out to the far side, foot on the line. Big stop, big basket, big stop. Again, Wireless involved in both, Blatch involved in both. Just 0.7 remaining in the third, with Norwood set to inbound. Romeo throwing it up on the turn. Can't get that one to go, but he's got plenty to go here. The big three-pointer right towards the end of the third when Lebanon was starting to come back and get within touching distance. The Philippines lead by eight behind the 22 points of Jason Castro. At the end of three, the Philippines 57, Lebanon 49. 
Well, we're set up for a great final quarter. You just sense there's a run there to come from Lebanon. The Philippines, they haven't shot the ball well from three-point line, but Lebanon have really struggled. They're 2 of 12. If they could connect a couple of them, we saw in the game against Jordan the way they could generate that momentum. Lebanon up to 14 offensive rebounds. The Philippines with 13. Lebanon had seven offensive boards in that quarter. Turnovers are starting to square up. Remember, Lebanon had five at quarter time and it allowed some easy baskets for the Philippines. Just six in the 20 minutes since. And it was a promising start to that quarter right down the middle of the Philippines zone. And Arachi, look at this from Castro. The speed. And here's the hustle from Castro, saving the possession. And then the three-point bomb from Mighty Mouse. He splashed that down. He's the man keeping the Philippines with one foot into the semi-finals. The Basil Bauji, he's pretty keen on heading to the semis as well. And Blatch, what about this feed? And Norwood getting upstairs. There's a good group of Filipino fans here. There's some Lebanon fans as well, and Haidar has treated them to some nice moves, as has Saoud, the hero from Tuesday night. But everyone stepped up for Lebanon at some point, and that's what they need in this final quarter. And for the Philippines, you know the stars are Castro and Blatch, with Romeo as the X Factor. But Lebanon don't have that luxury. They need everyone to step up in this final quarter. Start of the fourth quarter in this quarter-final match of the Philippines lead by 8, 57 to 49. Young there, Campo to Romeo. He's going to try from the outside again. Can't hit. What about that for a rebound from Dea Campo? A fresh 14 to work with. Blatch to Dea Campo. He's going to drive in to try and finish. Blatch will get the touch, but he won't get the roll. You talk about basketball being a game of millimeters. What about that? Rolling around, having a peak, peak down the cylinder, but rolling out. But I love the hustle of Dea Campo. And they need Blatch to be more active like this at both ends. You know, he hasn't been blocking shots. He's got one block tonight. He's been letting a lot of shots around the basket go uncontested. They need him dominating around the hoop at both ends. He misses his first foul shot. Able to hit that one. The Philippines is a team five of eight from the foul line. Yeah, go get it, yeah. Some pressure here, trying to take the ball out of the guard's hands. Saud. Balji. Puts oh, it up and shot. puts it in. Basil Balji has been so, so consistent throughout. Well, Blatch did a good job of putting some doubt in his mind. He made him hesitate, but it didn't matter. He splashed the triple. That's going to be big. Can Haidar and Balji hit jump shots in this final quarter to expose Blatch defensively? And way last to Andre Blatch. Across to Norwood, he's going to shoot another one. He puts it in this time. Gabe Norwood, who missed his first three, able to get that one to drop. Again, Blatch the distributor. Let's see how well Tab Baldwin's team can exploit his passing skills this final term. So, to try and answer back with a three short. And grabbed by Blatch, rebound number 14. Romeo quickly onto the right hand and foul. That's one way to stop him. That was a crude foul around the neck. That must have been close to unsportsmanlike. We see here just a reach in. Didn't quite get him around the neck. You have to be careful in those situations. Because sometimes that sort of call can turn a game. Philippines lead is nine. And they have possession. Blatch and Castro have combined for 38 of their 61 points. Here's Norwood. Monte Veros puts up a three. Off the mark. And here comes Youngblood. Still only six points in the game for Youngblood. Goes down by two. Finds a way out to Haidar. Haidar can't hit the three. Romeo Blatch going down. 
There's Romeo looking to attack. Out to Norwood. Good patience from Norwood. Still plenty of time to work with. Flash. Just edging his way closer and closer to the basket. Difficult shot up against Hydar. And then he's called for a foul. Not the most pretty passage of play for Andre Blatch that time. No, not at all. I mean, he can... He can utilise those one-on-one -on -one situations, but I think he's best at doing that on a quick ball reversal where there's already a driving lane there. I think he's got to be setting those high picks rolled down the middle. Either that or pop out for that mid-range jump shot. I think the Philippines have to do a better job of utilising his skills. Young blood, who's 3 of 11 from the field. Saud going to take on another three-pointer off the mark. Haidar trying to save it. Blatch. Back against Haidar, and picking up the pieces was Abdel Noor. How many times tonight has he made those junk plays where it's been a scrambled loose ball or an offensive ball? He's been the one there who's wanted it. He's up to eight Romeo points. trapped on half court here. Having to try and walk the tightrope and call for a travel. Lebanon forcing a turnover. We've had Castro on the bench now for almost three minutes. You think it's almost Castro time. Hasn't so far been able to replicate his headline performance from downtown against Jordan. High dark. On the left hand, rejected by Blatch. That's what we want to see from Andre Blatch as Jason Castro does check into the ball game for Honteveros. But on that last play, some really smart help defense from Romeo. Haydar popped for the three point shot. Romeo was there to put the doubt in his mind and he allowed Blatch to recover in time to force the drive. Saud. Driving inside. Able to find Youngblood on the perimeter and he puts it in at the end of the shot clock. Jay Youngblood gets Lebanon within four. If you want to win a quarter final, especially a close one, you've got to make big plays and tough shots. And it's Lebanon doing that at the moment. Maybe this is when he steps up down the stretch. Nine points now for Jay Youngblood. Here's Castro. There, Campo to try and answer back with a three. Can't hit, and Youngblood grabs the rebound. And that early pressure defense from Lebanon not allowing the Philippines much shot clock to run their plays. He faked the three to try and play the pass inside that time, and he's called for the foul as Castro bursts down court. That's the third team foul after less than four minutes. You see that again, just a reach in from out of position, just wanting to stop the fast break. And what about that from Youngblood? The contest was outstanding from Norwood. I was going to say, it's Superman closing him down. <laughs> Castro to Norwood. He's looking for a three, can't hit. Blatch battling for the boards, able to gather it above two of them. Foul. And that's the offense. There's the two guard front. Blatch set the screen, rolled straight down the middle. He didn't get the pass. He gets the offensive board and now two oh, free throws. Second foul on my dart. Blatch so far three of five from the foul line here tonight. Lebanon with this two guard front extended out against the zone. I'd just love to see Castro on the wing. A screen there. Make the feed and let him attack the basket as we see Jay Youngblood taking a rest. Black chips the first, makes it a five point game. The crowd well and truly on Lebanon's side now. Black gets them both. Important. Tells the crowd to be quiet. <laughs> An important period here for Lebanon with Youngblood out of the game. He didn't want to come out, but Coach Matic, he has been around a long time. He knows his man needs a quick burst before he gets back out there. How about the pace there from Arakji to the hoop? I'm talking about a quick burst. You can't let that man drive to the left. He'll finish at the rack almost every time. Four-point game, five and a half to play. Romeo on the left hand looking to... Find Andre Blatch. Here's Castro for another three. Can't hear that time, Deo Campo grabs the offensive board. Blatch was what calling for it and gets the foul. That's free throws to come. Clever pass from Deo Campo. The big man recognized the mismatch inside and beautifully waited. 
Second on a rack gene. Blatch back at the line where he made his last two. He's got the crowd on his back again. And he tells him to be quiet again. <laughs> and we've seen from the last two possessions, Lebanon do not have a man inside who can guard Blatch. They Philippines haven't exploited it enough. But if they can go to that down the stretch, Blatch is going to get a lot of opportunities right here at the strike. And he tells him to be quiet one more time. 20 points and 15 boards for Andre Blatch. Well, the best way to tell him to be quiet is to make those free throws. He's hit four in a row. That's clutch play. Midway point to the fourth quarter of the quarterfinal here. So driving down the baseline, back towards Arakji, almost picked off by Castro. Top clock down to three. So across to the far side, fits the pass across. The three off the mark. Great defense from Blatch. He was switched out onto Saoud, but he didn't give him the space to get that lefty three-point shot going. There's Blatch again looking to attack and putting it in. 22 for Andre Blatch. Well, you called Gabe Norwood Superman, but right now it's Blatch who's the man of steel for the Philippines. Rakchi behind the back. Looking to drive against Blatch. Tried to throw it backwards and Norwood was in the way. Well, he was the man of steel that time. Romeo driving down the baseline. Finds Castro, steps inside this time, gives it to Romeo. Hesitated on taking the shot. He's got a Ratchy all over him now. Romeo oh, getting right. inside. Oh. How about that battle? This, Terrence Romeo into double figures. This kid has just grown before our eyes. The composure then, he had a three-point shot. He said, it's not the right one. I'm just going to take it inside. And so did Blatch with a soft touch. How about this finish? Speaking of soft touch, it's like a feather duster. Two hugely talented young guards going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And it's Terence Romeo who comes out on top in the battle with Whale Arakji. And Lebanon forced to call timeout, having gone down by double figures again. Well, so much as we see the foul trouble, no serious foul trouble for Lebanon. And we talked about that important period with young blood being on the bench. The Philippines have made the most of it. Just when it seemed all the momentum was with Lebanon, they were hitting tough shots, they were getting some O boards, they were forcing errors from the Philippines at their offensive end. But yeah, Andre Blatch, they recognise the mismatch twice down low, once from the mid post. And then Terence Romeo, well, it's always a mismatch when he's on his game. Jay Youngblood had been struggling. He was 3 of 11 from the field, hit that big three-pointer. Then he turned the ball over, but nothing worth trying to keep him in the ball game, having made that big shot. Well, he's a player who does a lot more than score. He draws defensive attention. He's a smart player. He makes the extra pass. He gets deflections on defense. He can shut down the best player on the other team as well. He's valuable in a range of areas, even if he's not scoring. And he's back in the ball game now, Arakji. Youngblood. Cross to Arakji, he's going to shoot from the far side and put it in. Lebanon refused to let the Philippines get away. Just a real breakdown there from Jason Castro, one of the few mistakes he's made in tonight's game. Final three and a half minutes, Blatch calling for it. Romeo says, I'm just going to shoot the three. And it bounces up over the top of the battle. They didn't experience that time from Romeo. Young club was helping across this side of the floor. It meant uh, the Philippines had numbers on the weak side. He just didn't get it there. Young blood. Abdel Noor with the crossover. Driving against Blatch. Blatch comes out on top. And after that last play, Tab Baldwin just motioning to his team to calm down. And Castro goes and gets the ball this time. He wants to run a set. See if they can get it inside. Here is Castro. One on one with Saud. Castro to the hole, can't finish, but Pingris puts it in. What about Mark Pingris? He is just so willing to do what the team needs. He doesn't need a touch on a possession, but if there's an offensive rebound, you can bet he'll be there to get it. Saud. Takes it, fires the three, got hit. Looked like it was fouled. 
Romeo will come down, caught, rejected by Haidar, who slammed the door in his face. Haidar, he doesn't look like an athlete, but he is. How about that block shot? He came from a mile behind Romeo and closed him down on the glass. Look at this. How about the timing? Timeout called with two and a half minutes to play. The Philippines leading by 9.71 to 62, behind 22 points apiece from Andre Blanche and from Jason Castro. They've also got 10 from Terence Romeo. We look at the rebounders, or the, the leading scorers and rebounders for Philippines. You see that big double-double, 22 and 17 for Blanche. He's also got three assists as well. It's been a mighty performance. You talk about dynamic duos. Are they any better in Asian basketball than Blatch and Jason Castro? It used to be Ehadadi and, of course, Marty Comradi for Iran. They'll tell you that they're still the two best in Asian basketball. We'll find out in the next couple of nights. Of course, it's China taking on Iran in the semifinals tomorrow. Japan are already there. We'll be, they'll be facing Lebanon or the Philippines. And you can't help but sense tonight. The Philippines have had the answers. Lebanon have played some pretty good basketball. They've executed the plan that they wanted. They just haven't been able to close that gap. Every time Castro or Romeo or Black steps up and makes the play, it's two and a half minutes still for Lebanon to produce something special. Black finding Castro. Final five seconds of the shot clock. Castro's going to pull up for three and nails. Jason Castro is the sniper and he's got the semi final set firmly in his sights. Five of ten from long range from Castro. He is just incredible. What a play. Youngblood. Saoud, he was the sniper the other night. Youngblood puts it up off the mark. Blatch down for another board. Can only bat it out of bounds. I think that was Abueva who ran Saud off the three-point line. He was ready to fire, made him put it on the bounce and give it off to Youngblood, who isn't as good a three-point shooter. Final two minutes and a 12-point Philippines lead now. Haidar, quick catch and shoot from the outside. Haidar answers back with a three. Well, we said they need some big plays. It's exactly what they need. I think... You know, Blatch is looking to block shots under the rim at the moment. They need high data at least, at least hit one or two more jump shots to get him back into this game. This is his first one from the outside. He's got 16 points. Waver in towards Pingris. Pingris puts it up and puts it in. And everybody's stepping up for the Philippines. We talk about the dynamic duo, but there's been a number of other players make plays and two big ones from Pingris. Youngblood gets the contact and will go to the line for a chance at a three-point play. Lebanon trying to stay within touching distance. Well, they're making the plays at this end of the floor, but they've got to get a stop down the other end and not just get a stop, but clear the defensive glass and get out in transition for an easy opportunity. Three-point play good for Youngblood. The deficit is eight points, but there's only 80 seconds to play. It's a half-hearted trap so far. They really need to throw some caution to the wind. Abueva got one thought in mind as he drives to the hole. Out of bounds still, Philippines ball. And for me, I'd put Hunter Veras back into the ball game instead of Abueva. You've got to make good decisions at this part of the game, and Abueva just needed to run time off the clock in that situation. He's coming up with some big scores. Three big scores in a row from Mark Pinkris. Final minute, Haidar going from the outside again. Can't hit this time. Norwood grabs it. And the Philippines are closing in on the final four. It almost looks as if Lebanon have given up here. They've got to keep pressing, try and get a steal. There's still 50 seconds left. Norwood. Running those precious seconds off the clock, Blatch with one more pretty move to put the exclamation mark on the victory. Trademark Andre Blatch, the Euro step, the finger roll. That's the Philippines closing in on their second straight FIBA Asia Championship final. The only roadblock in the way at the moment is 38 seconds here and then Japan tomorrow night.
28 seconds to go, and Ponte Veros comes back in. Arakji going to inbound the ball for Lebanon. Blatch to the bench, he gets a hero's welcome. Youngblood shoots from way outside. And Abueva grabs it. And Abueva certainly isn't going to slow things down. Drives all the way and banks it in. And then look at the celebration as well from him. Well, the Philippines threatened to blow this game out all night. It's taken them 39 minutes to do it. But finally, they've broken Lebanon's back. Here's High Dar. We'll put that one in for an easy two. Well, the Philippines were feeling it right from the start, you felt. They've played the game with flair. They've played the game to have some fun, but they've played the game with focus as well. And a 12-point victory will take them through to the semi-finals. Behind 25 points from Jason Castro, who hit five from downtown, as well as 24 points from Andre Blatch, the big two, combining for 49 points as the Philippines win it 82 to 70. Well, the Philippines... It wasn't quite the same slick performance they produced against Iran, but their individual talent was simply brilliant, and they did enough getting those players into good situations where they could show off their skills. I think they're going to have to play a little bit better than that to beat China or Iran if they make it to the final. But if Blatch and William or Castro combined for 49 points again against Japan, I think that's going to be tough for the Japanese to beat. Look at those numbers. I mean, it came down to big plays down the stretch, didn't it? The numbers were important, but Pingress, what about his three straight baskets? Blatch early in that final quarter, getting to the free throw line, then making that driving basket. Romeo with his plays. Jason Castro pulling up for the three-point dagger in the heart of Lebanon. And, yeah, you talk about individual talent. When they make plays down the stretch, generally your team wins. Castro, 25 points. Blatch, 17 rebounds. A high dar. Great performance. The two big men we said, could they exploit Blatch at the other end? Well, they did. 18 points and 17 points for Haydar and Bauji. 13 boards for Bauji. Nine for Haydar. But perhaps they didn't quite get enough help from the guards. Abdul Noor with eight points. Saud with seven. Arakchi with eight. And Youngblood with 12. It was a gutsy performance from Lebanon. It didn't all go right for them. They kept persisting. They came time and time and time again. See Dio Campo there. He was tough inside. It wasn't his best game. Pingris was the man who came in and made the plays at the power position late. Castro was the man who made the plays. And Abueva, he's not a polished diamond, but he's a hard rock. And he came up big a number of times. And what about this from Gabe Norwood? He also hit a big three-pointer in that final term. Arachi showed us the brilliance that makes him one of the most promising players in Asian basketball. Youngblood struggled, but wasn't that a big basket? He gave his team hope. You can see on the bench, they believed at that point in time, but this man believed. He stepped up to the free throw line. The fans urged him on. What about that soft touch? And then later in the game, he would finish it off. This time, the rolling runner from the big fella. He's an exquisite talent. The fans are on Lebanon's side, except for that little pocket. And it was Philippine who prevailed. They're off to the semifinals.